Hey there, and welcome to Noctis on YouTube. Although the form of submarine internet cables is very large, the actual size of these cables is very small, similar to a human hair. Submarine cables are coated with various layers to protect them from external damage such as earthquakes, ocean water pressure, and so on. Here's a brief process of making submarine internet cables. Internet technology has come a long way since it was first introduced. Initially, the internet was only accessible to a handful of people who had the knowledge and equipment to go online. While today, the internet is available to billions of people around the world thanks to the development of submarine cables that connect all continents. About 97% of international data communication is done through the submarine cable communication system. As of 2020, there are over 235 submarine cable systems installed worldwide with a total length of approximately 997,000 kilometers. The installation of submarine cables is carried out using a ship. Usually the cables are laid on the ocean floor, but in areas with high marine activity, they are placed in a trench using special equipment. Internet cables today are made of optical fibers, which are cables made of very fine glass. Unlike copper cables, fiber optic cables transmit data in the form of light, which can reach speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, while copper cables transmit data in the form of electrical signals. On average, copper-based internet connections provide speeds of up to 300 megabits per second. To make fiber optic cables, manufacturers prepare the material called solid glass or freeform, which is made of cup glass. Freeform is made using a chemical process called modifier chemical vapor deposition or MCVD. The end of the cup glass is attached to a special LED or lathe machine. In this process, two cup glasses are placed on the LED machine. Later, both cup glasses will be rotated by a lathe machine, then heated with a torch from hydrogen and oxygen. Through this heating process, both ends of the cup glass turn white, indicating that the temperature has reached 2000 degrees Celsius and the two cup glasses will merge into one. In the MCVD process, chemical materials are also inserted, and at very high temperatures, these chemicals will form a layer inside. This layer is the waveguide profile, also known as the refractive index profile, which is necessary for laser-based communication systems. Later, this layer will melt into glass, which is the core of the fiber optic cable, while the remaining cup glass will wrap around the fiber optic. After becoming a preform, the preform is then cut using a torch until it separates into two parts. Then, the preform that has been cut is converted into optical fibers, a process called fiber drop. The preform is placed into a graphite furnace and heated to 2000 degrees Celsius to soften the preform's end. Then the force of gravity causes the freeform glass end to fall downwards. The first string of glass that falls will be cut, and the remaining string of glass will be inserted into a series of devices that control the fiber optic diameter to maintain a stable diameter of 125 micrometers. The string of glass is allowed to fall downwards, passing through a cooling chamber filled with water and helium gas. The fiber that comes out of the cooling chamber will have room temperature. Then the fiber optic will go to a drum to be rolled up. However, before that, the fiber optic will be tested to ensure its quality. Next, the optical fiber thread is coated with petroleum jelly wrapping and inserted into a standing machine for the spinning process. Several optical fiber threads are twisted into one strand, and this strand is coated with layers such as copper cup, polycarbonate, and others until it becomes a fiber optic cable ready to be installed underwater. 
The thickness of the fiber optic cable installed underwater ranges from 7 to 10 centimeters. Although the cable has a large diameter, the core of the fiber optic cable is very small. The thick part consists of the wrapping layers. The fiber strands are protected by steel wires within these layers, safeguarding the core from external damage such as earthquakes, ocean water pressure, and shark bites. Take for instance this footage where a shark attacks a fiber optic cable. Sharks sometimes sense electromagnetic fields and are attracted to objects that have an electric field. Even so, when tested in the lab or at sea, there's no clear connection between these factors and this assumption. Among the many sharks attracted to cables, the crocodile shark stands out. Their habitat ranges from near the sea surface down to rather deep waters, around 590 meters, or what's commonly referred to as the mesopelagic zone. In addition, the fiber optic cable is also protected by copper. The copper also functions as a power conductor used to power repeaters in the shape of torpedoes. Besides being protected with copper, undersea cable technology has also been redesigned to improve protection against fish bites. This includes adding a layer of Kevlar. Fiber optic cables have a very high transmission speed using light refraction. The light source used is usually a laser or LED. Because submarine cables can reach thousands of kilometers in length, optical signal attenuation usually occurs along the optical cable during transmission. Therefore, if the transmission distance is far, a repeater is usually installed every 80 kilometers to strengthen the light waves, and the repeater is powered through the copper layer in the optical cable. Although submarine optical cables have many protective layers, sometimes they require repair when damaged. Technicians will receive notifications from the damaged fiber optic cable. After that, a ship will use the dynamic positioning system to facilitate tracking the location of the damaged cable. After it is located, a device called a cutting grapnel is lowered to the ocean floor to lift and cut the damaged cable. Once it is cut in two, a holding grapnel will be lowered to retrieve the first piece of the cable. Then, the second piece of the cable will also be retrieved and placed on the ship for the splicing process. On the ship, technicians use a fusion splice, a method used to splice fiber optic cables together using a device that generates heat. When all fiber optic cables are spliced into one, the fiber optic cable will be lowered back into the ocean floor. So, that's a brief process of making submarine internet cables that helps connect billions of people around the world. Fiber optic cables go through many production and protection stages so they can transmit data at very high speeds and withstand various conditions under the sea. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.